I'm worried about Daniel, but how do I tell everyone? How do I convince them that my husband's no longer my husband? We're often told how perfect we are for each other, how right we seem together, but now, I don't think anyone would recognize us. They wouldn't see that Daniel was a different man though. I don't think they would see the change that I've seen. They would blame the relationship. People grow apart, they would say. People change. These things happen. I met Daniel when I was at my lowest point, in the grip of a deep and dark depression. He didn't know how damaged I was and he expected nothing from me. He saved me from myself, without even knowing he was doing it, and he never asked for anything from me in return. I loved him so much. We moved into our first house together, just before lockdown started. It was the perfect place for us. A house in the countryside, but fairly close to a major city. Big enough for us to host parties, and maybe one day raise a family. A huge garden that would give our dogs plenty of room to run around in, once we had some dogs at least. And best of all, it was a fixer-upper. We were ready to transform a dirty, neglected old house into a home. Our house. Then lockdown hit. All our plans were put on hold. We barely had any of our furniture put in the house. And the decorating had hardly even begun. We were living in a bare shell. It wasn't ideal, but we made it work. We were still happy, but then Daniel went missing. I woke up one morning and he wasn't in bed with me. That wasn't unusual because Daniel was always up first. What worried me was that I couldn't find him in the house or the garden. He wasn't doing any of the millions of DIY jobs that were waiting for us, or cooking himself breakfast, or even sitting in the pile of cushions that were our makeshift couch, watching Netflix on my laptop. The two of us took daily walks in the woods behind our house, so I guessed he might be there. The car was still parked in the driveway, but he could have walked to the nearest convenience store two and a half miles away to get milk or eggs or something. Daniel didn't like being cooped up, and was always looking for an excuse to get out and stretch his legs. I was sure he'd be back in no time. Two agonizing days later, I woke up from a restless night to sounds coming from somewhere below me. I flew down the stairs to find Daniel sanding the floorboards in the dining room. I threw my arms around him and screamed with happiness and relief tears streaming down my face as I sobbed and covered him with white kisses. The rest of the day went by in a blur. As we contacted family and friends and the police to let them all know that Daniel was back and he was fine. According to Daniel, he had gone for an early walk in the woods and got lost. He eventually found his way back to the house, back to me, and he was completely fine. At first, I didn't even notice that anything was wrong. It didn't take me long to realize that something was off with Daniel. The man I knew, the man I'd learned inside and out, was the most chilled out guy ever. He was even a little emotionally repressed. While I was a lightning rod of emotion and wore my heart on my sleeve, Daniel was quiet and contemplative and didn't say anything emotional unless he thought about it for hours beforehand. He was occasionally silly, always thoughtful, never confrontational. But this Daniel, this new Daniel was different. He smiled too much for a start. His posture was too upright, too perfect. His laugh was too loud, too wild. When he tried to emulate Daniel's silliness and our little inside jokes, they were stilted and wrong. Worst of all was the way he told me he loved me. He would hold my gaze with dark, still eyes, a smile tugging at the corner of his mouth, like he was trying not to laugh. 
I love you, he said, cupping a hand to my face. The words were robotic, practiced, over-rehearsed. Before I knew it, I'd lived with an imposter for a week. Every day I kept wondering, how can I prove that it isn't the man I married? I tried to search his phone for evidence, but I couldn't find it anywhere. Whenever I asked him about it, he'd just say he must have misplaced it, and would shrug like it's no big deal. Daniel would never do that. Just like everyone else in our generation, he's addicted to his phone. He loves posting house and garden updates to his Instagram story. He would care that his phone was missing. Last night, I woke up to find that the imposter wasn't in bed with me. I sat up and looked around the room. My blood turned cold when I saw him standing in the hall, staring in at me through the crack in the door. What are you doing? I asked. I was terrified, but my voice was rooted somewhere beyond fear. My voice was angry and impatient and exhausted. The door creaked open and I saw his smiling face in the moonlight. I like watching you sleep, he said sweetly. If Daniel, my Daniel, had said something like that to me, I would have gone gooey inside. The imposter made me feel threatened. You're acting like a creep, Daniel, I said, allowing the certainty of my anger to take over the shakiness of my fear. If you're going to pull this stuff tonight, you can sleep downstairs. You've been acting weird all week and I'm sick of it. Without another word, he turned and headed down the hallway. I lay my head down on my pillow and listen as he slowly descends the stairs. When he reached the bottom, his footsteps stopped. I imagine him just standing there, silent and motionless. The mix of fear and anger flared up in me again, and I threw myself out of bed. Storming to the top of the stairs, ready to confront him. Just as I reached the staircase, he stepped out of view. I got back into bed and tugged the sheets up to my chin, wrapping myself in them like a burrito until I felt snug and safe. I missed my Daniel. I missed the familiarity of his touch, his hugs, his kisses. This imposter felt nothing like Daniel. I wouldn't let him touch me again. Every time he did, my skin would crawl. I eventually fell asleep, but once or twice in the night, I blurrily woke up to the spine-tingling sensation that I was being watched. Finally today, something happened. I don't know if people would consider it evidence, or if it'll make anyone believe what I'm saying. I know it's completely ridiculous. It sounds insane. This morning, Daniel was making me breakfast. He was smiley, chipper, and talkative. I told him I wasn't in the mood for pancakes. I wanted bacon. He tried to tell me that we didn't have any bacon. But I snapped at him, and I told him I already knew that. I told him that I wanted bacon. And if he wanted to make up for being such a creep last night, he could go to the store and get me some. I'm not sure what I hoped to accomplish. Maybe to rile him up and see what he would do. Maybe just to get rid of him for a while. When he left, he tried to kiss me. I turned my head away, and he kissed my cheek instead. I shuddered. I'm not sure what I've done to upset you, he said. But I'll make it all better, I promise. Once he was gone, 
I decided to scour the house for clues. There had to be something that could prove that the man living in my house wasn't really Daniel. If I hadn't found it yet, it's because I wasn't looking closely enough. I started looking around downstairs, opening boxes and drawers, and overturning what little furniture we had to see if I could find anything. I felt ridiculous, but I was still determined. I tore at hanging flaps of old wallpaper, overturned our mattress, and emptied the closet. I tore up plants in the garden with my bare hands, ripped open the cushions of our makeshift couch, and pulled up the edges of the carpets. Eventually, when I was worn down and exhausted, I collapsed in the hallway upstairs. I leaned my head against the wall, and letting the tears come freely, the imposter would be back soon, and I'd be forced to face the deepening void where the real Daniel had used to be. The imposter's presence made it all so much worse. It only highlighted me how much I missed Daniel. But what if he was Daniel? The thought occurred to me like an icy crossbow bolt to the chest. As I sobbed, I toyed with the threadbare wallpaper, tugging on any torn edges and tearing off tiny strips. Maybe the things that I was worried other people might say had been my own worries. We'd grown apart. We'd changed. These things. I grabbed another piece of wallpaper and pulled. Instead of tearing off another strip, a whole section of the wall seemed to wobble. I froze, wondering if I'd imagined it, or if I was losing it completely. I hauled myself up onto my knees and dug my fingers into an edge that was hidden cleverly in the decades-old design of the old wallpaper. I traced the edge around until I realized what I found. A door. I dug my fingers into the edge and pulled. With a reluctant groan, the door swung open. I found myself staring into a closet. It was non-desecrate, with white walls and a single hanging light bulb that switched on and off with a pull of a chain. There were no shelves, no hangers, just one item laying on the ground. It was Daniel's phone. I snatched it up hungrily and tried tapping the screen, but the battery was empty. I ran into the bedroom and plugged it in, missing the socket on the first two or three attempts because of my shaking hands. I waited, my eyes fixed to the screen, trying to will the phone back to life. I heard the front door open and close, and the imposter's voice called out, Honey, I'm home. Damn it, I hissed under my breath. The phone finally sprang to life, and I typed in Daniel's passcode. I went into his messages and saw the last person he'd sent anything to was me. There were red exclamation marks next to the messages. He tried to send them to me, and I opened them. My body turning cold as my hands started trembling uncontrollably. The last few messages read, Babe, I don't know what happened. I thought I heard something. So I got up, and I found this hidden door that led into a dark hallway. Did he mean the same door I had just found? But it wasn't a hallway, it was just a closet. I went inside, and it was like a maze. Now I'm lost. I can't get any signal. I'm scared. All of the messages were sent between 3 a.m. and 3.30 a.m. Tears dripped onto the screen of his phone and I realized I was crying again. I could hear the imposter moving around downstairs. The smell of sizzling bacon drifting up from the kitchen. I locked the phone and wiped my tears off of the screen, accidentally swiping to the camera. I was about to close it when I noticed the tiny preview in the bottom corner. 
of the last thing Daniel had taken a photo of. I unlocked the phone again and went into the photo album. The last three items were two videos and a photo. In the first video from the night of his disappearance, Daniel got out of bed. I appeared on the screen briefly, groaning, and turning onto my side when the light from the camera glared at my face. Daniel went out into the hallway, following a noise that sounded like a finger tapping on the inside of the walls. He discovered the concealed door, and struggled for a moment or two to get enough purchase on the door to pull it open. When he did, the room beyond wasn't a room at all. The light bulb was still hanging there, but a passage stretched on and on into the darkness instead. The video cut and I swiped to the next. When I pressed play, the camera was swinging around wildly and Daniel was breathing frantically. Instead of a single long passage, he was now in a labyrinth of blind corners, moving dizzyingly fast as he struggled to find his way out. I'm stuck, his voice said. I teared up again. His voice was like fresh air. The difference between him and the imposter seemed so subtle at first. But now it seems like night and day. Where the hell am I? The video ended, and I swiped to the next. Instead of a video, I was faced with a photograph instead. I felt nauseous with fear when I looked at the screen. Daniel had tried to take a photo around the corner, so the majority of the screen was obscured by the wall. In the dark hallway beyond, the imposter was stood in the middle of the hallway, staring directly into the camera. Babe? The imposter called upstairs. Yes, I called back, my voice shaky and weak. Breakfast is ready. Coming, I called back. Before I go downstairs, I need to let people know. If you see my face in news reports before I've gone missing, just know that I've found a way into the endless maze and I fully intend on coming back with Daniel. If you hear about the horrible torture I inflicted on my husband, just know that whatever that thing is, it's not my husband, and it deserves everything that's coming to it.